Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So no doubt you've been following the situation in the U.S. Senate where Democrats have provided the crucial votes to pass a bill that deregulates important parts of the Dodd-Frank legislation. Now, the Dodd-Frank bill was passed in response to the financial crisis of 2008. It created uh, some relatively minor but still important requirements on banks to hold a certain reserves of capital uh, when they lend money out. Uh, also created uh, some, some division between uh, the kinds of banks that could speculate with depositors' money and those that, that couldn't. And the new bill that uh, a cadre of Democrats in the Senate helped Republicans pass in the last few days, uh, that bill rolls back some of those restrictions. Now, some people have been expressing surprise about the, uh, the handful of Democrats that have provided those crucial votes to pass that bill out of the Senate. And what I've said on Twitter <laughs> Uh, and to friends is, this must be a really shocking and surprising development to everyone who hasn't paid attention to American politics for the last 30 years. I mean, the Democratic Party is a party that still takes a huge amount of money from Wall Street in the form of campaign contributions and support. And that money comes with expectations. And the Senate Democrats in particular uh, have been a source, uh, a reliable source of votes for efforts to deregulate Wall Street over the course of the last uh, 20 years. Just to give you some history here, Senate Democrats provided key votes in the late 1990s for the landmark deregulation uh, that many people say was in part responsible for the financial crisis. That's a bill that was passed, a bipartisan bill that was ultimately signed by Bill Clinton. And the Senate Democrats uh, provided some key votes uh, for that. Not all Democrats, but some. Uh, the Senate Democrats provided the key votes for the massive Wall Street bailout that happened in the middle of the financial crisis. Uh, it was a lot of Senate Democratic votes that made sure that that huge uh, multi-billion dollar bailout happened. It was the Senate Democrats in 2014 that voted for the Cromnibus, quote-unquote, bill that passed the spending bill that included uh, provisions deregulating the uh, derivatives trading uh, system, uh, a provision that Elizabeth Warren, the uh, Senate Democrat, was railing against as a giveaway to Citigroup. And now you have a handful of key Senate Democrats providing the key votes to pass a bill uh, deregulating parts of the Dodd-Frank bill uh, that deal with capital reserves uh, and, and the divisions between how much uh, money or how, how big the banks are that can speculate with depositors' money. The point here is that it's not all Senate Democrats that have joined these deregulatory efforts, but the Senate Democratic Caucus over the last 20 years has provided the pivotal votes to pass these deregulatory bills, and they have been a reliable source of support for those deregulatory bills. So people who are expressing surprise over this must just not be interested in or know of the history of the the legislative process over the last 20 or 30 years and the Senate Democratic Caucus over that time as well. I mean, if you're surprised by this, you must not have been paying attention. Or, alternately, you want to kind of pretend that the Senate Democrats have been far more uh, populist, far more progressive than they actually have been. Now, it's certainly true there are senators like Elizabeth Warren, there are senators like Bernie Sanders, there are uh, progressive senators who have been loyal and consistent critics of these deregulatory efforts. But if you step back in the historical context, when you see this bill that the Republicans have been pushing forward, and they have spearheaded it, uh, if you see this bill and you, and you express surprise that there is some uh, significant democratic support for it, uh, you're, you're basically not living in reality. Uh, and, and look, you can agree with some of this stuff, right? I mean, I mean, you can say, hey, you agree with the bailout vote or you agree with this deregulatory effort or that deregulatory effort. But the point is you can't say that this is some sort of shock or surprise.
I mean, th it is not a shock or surprise that large amounts of money have continued to flow to key Senate Democrats uh, over the course of 20 or 30 years. And those Democrats, the Democratic caucus, has provided key votes for deregulatory efforts that serve those Wall Street donors. That, is a, that has been a fact of life. Uh, certainly, it is true that there has been more criticism of it of late uh, among some Democrats uh, in the Congress, but this is a, a fact of American political life. Certainly there has been pushback to it among grassroots groups as well, and grassroots groups have gotten, uh, I think, more powerful and more influential uh, and more vocal uh, in their opposition to this kind of behavior. But this has been a fact of, of political life in America for the last 20 or 30 years, and, and pretending that it's a surprise or a shock uh, omits that history and omits the context of these votes. These votes on the most recent deregulatory bill are part of a larger story. That story may be changing because Americans uh, in polls that you see and in elections that are happening are clearly sick of uh, politicians who are, who are voting with their big Wall Street donors. But this is part of the story, and, and this story clearly continues with this most recent uh, Democrat, uh, excuse me, with this most recent uh, deregulatory bill and with the Senate Democratic support for that deregulatory bill.